Hey, it's Joe Lines, and today we're going to be covering the ternary operator um, in AutoHotKey, which is basically a compact way to do if, then, and else statements. And um, this is the simplest form I break it down to say, all right, you're going to evaluate the equation, and then if that is true, right, we're going to make whatever you're doing have it return this value, and if it's not true, it'll return this false value, right? So if both of these are values, it's just which one it'll return depends on if this equation is true or not. And so here's a simple example. Um, and I'm putting the var equals and the ones in quotes. I did that because up here I have it in quotes. So AutoHotKey is thinking of it as a string. I'm going to save this, reload it, run it, and it returns 1, right? And is 1, right, is because it now equals 1. Well, what if I say, well, what if var equals 3? Save it, reload, launch. And it says, hey, it's not 1. So it said, hey, this is not equal to 1. This is equal to 3. It's not equal to 1, so we'll take this one. Right? Very simple, very straightforward. The cool thing is, let's get rid of this simple example, is that you can easily nest them. Um, and now, first off, um, this one goes, I, I have it right now broken across many rows. And so let's save it. Right now I'm going to ask it, um, if var is equal to 1, return the word 1. If var is equal to 2, return the word 2. If var is equal to 3, return the word 3, right? Um, and then if not, return this else, because basically if it doesn't equal 1, 2, or 3, it's going to fail all those and return this. So I'm going to save it, reload it, launch. Notice it returned 1. Why? Because up here var equals 1. Well, if I change this to a 2, save, reload, launch, it returns 2. If, I, if this is equal to a 3, Save and launch, and what if it's 300? Right, now it's else. Basically, anything else that's not that, it's going to return um, 1, 2, or 3 is going to return that. Now, I like writing it this way across multiple lines just because it's so easy for me to understand and to build out. But the beauty of the ternary operator is after you get this figured out, right, and I'm going to leave this here just because it, um, it's, I, I like the way it looks like that is you can you can condense it all onto one line so again so now we're still at 300 let's change this back to 3 3 2 so for me when I try reading this stuff it gets much much harder to look at in this format um, to evaluate so that's why I I like to look at it this way write it this way um, once I get the hang of what I'm doing, then I just break it all up into one line. And you know, when you're when you're um, when you're going backwards, let's see. I could probably hit this Control H. Let's replace every colon with a new line. Let's throw in a tab colon. Let's do regular. Uh, let's see. Transform backlashes, and I think I might need this as well. Whoa. Um, let's try that again. Replace it in selection. There we go. So now I could go ahead and write it, um, get it the way I want it to, and then break it back out. But that's it. It's very, very powerful, um, especially if if you are like me and, and will really enjoy having things on one line. Um, this is this would normally take up several lines if you're doing um, if then and else statements, and it's just really nice and clean. I hope that helps. Thanks. Oh, you know, the other thing is you can put in, I'm evaluating a variable, but let's say I had a function, I could put, like, my func, and if that is re that function returns a value of, of 1, um, that'll work fine. If, it, if you had an object in here, I could also say, like, if object.a is equal to that, right? It works with whatever you want, so you can evaluate a lot of different things. Well, obviously, you'd want to update all of your logic, but um, it's not just tied to using a variable. We're storing it in a variable, but that's just in this example. It was a nice, simple way to show how you can do it across multiple things. Thanks.